Friends, it is uh, December 4th. It is Friday, 2020. And we are closing in toward the end of our week here in our first week of our new devotional where we're looking at some of the great passages that we find in Scripture that connect with Christmas. This week we've been looking at the Annunciation and Mary's uh, Magnificat. We're going to continue today with her song, her Magnificat, from Luke 1, verses 51 through 50. Four. I'm going to take a little drink of tea, sustain my voice through this moment. Let's look at scripture together. God has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He's brought down the powerful from their thrones. He has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. This is the word of the Lord. You know, one of the th most wonderful gifts God gives us is imagination. And imagination allows us to join in the pictures that God wants us to have of the future that he's bringing about. It's interesting in the Lord's Prayer, isn't it, that, that Jesus teaches us to pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. <clears throat> Can you... Picture the kingdom coming around you. Can you picture how different the world would be if God's will were followed and obeyed? Can you picture the wholeness of relationships, the richness of understanding, the blessings of community, the wonders of peace? It's important to exercise your imagination to think through what the world is meant to be like. Now, it's interesting in our passage today, I said yesterday that Mary was not only this sort of shy but, but deep and obedient young woman who kind of dutifully went along with God's surprising favor, she also had a prophetic edge to her soul. She had a deep uh, insight about God. And in her Magnificat, she, she shows you this. She has, in fact, what you might call a revolutionary spiritual imagination. She can envision a world in which the powerful who are taking advantage of the weak, the proud are disoriented, the powerful are unseated, and uh, those who are in, in positions of control because of their wealth are, uh, are sent empty away. She can imagine a world in which the lowly are lifted and the hungry are filled. She's picturing a kind of social revolution, and it extends into the international realm. She can picture the promises that had been made to uh, her ancestors, and we'll get to that tomorrow, being fulfilled. It's remarkable. Uh, her imagination, uh, she, she, he, God is able to remember his servant Israel and remember his mercy, and that's a reference to the fact that despite change not seeming possible sometimes in the big worlds of politics and of international politics. She can see God at work, this teenage girl, in all those things. And you know her confidence, the sign of her confidence? She puts all of the verbs in this passage, which is a passage about the future, in the past tense. He has filled the hungry with, with good things. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones. He has remembered and blessed and changed the circumstances of the nation, his servant Israel. Powerful. When you say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, what do you think about? What do you imagine? Let's take a minute and pray. Heavenly Father, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory, always and forever. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the gift of that prayer, and we do pray that you will give us imaginations that can see the future you have for us and for our world, and therefore have confidence in our own day and our own time, despite our challenges, as we live into it. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.